IMO 2020 is just around the corner. Are you ready? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. Ready or not, here it comes! No matter who you talk to, IMO 2020 promises to be a time of uncertain fuel prices. Starting January 2020, everyone will likely pay a higher price on their bunker bill, even if you have nothing to do with the IMO rules. What? How does that work? Well, even if you never heard of the IMO, you should take five minutes to learn the basics of IMO 2020 and how it will affect you at the fuel dock. You can't delay it or avoid it. On January 1st, 2020, the IMO severely reduces sulfur emissions for every single vessel in the world. That is, vessels that fall under IMO. Sitting happy in 2019, the IMO allowed vessels to emit sulfur emissions, that is, SOX, of up to 3.5%, and that's when operating outside emissions control areas. That was nice. That meant burning cheap, heavy fuel oil, HFO, in most of the world's oceans. <sighs> Happy days are over. Starting January 1st, 2020, the new limit for SOX emissions dropped to just 0.5%, seven times lower than before. Only two major ways to achieve that, install an exhaust gas scrubber or burn low sulfur fuel. There is one less common strategy, which includes switching to LNG, you're not going to see that very often. Now, I didn't see a massive rush on exhaust gas scrubbers being installed in the last few years. And if you didn't install one before, it's too late now. They are not simply plug and play devices. So for the roughly 50,000 commercial marine vessels in the world, most will need to start purchasing low sulfur fuel starting January 1st, 2020. How many exactly? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But hold on, you say. Your ship doesn't even fall under IMO rules. Why should you care about this? Supply and demand. Starting 2020, every ship in the world is going to want massive quantities of low sulfur fuel. Now, where do we get low sulfur fuel from? Track the supply chain all the way back to the oil refinery and we discover that low sulfur fuel comes out of the distillation column at the same point as diesel fuel. Now bear with me here, I am a naval architect, not a chemical engineer or a refinery expert, but in layman's terms, low sulfur fuel is essentially diesel fuel with an extra step to strip away the extra sulfur. Uh, that's called catalytic hydrotreating. Thankfully, we don't expect the oil refineries to develop IMO low sulfur fuel as a completely new distillate. Instead, they will likely blend ultra low sulfur diesel fuel with existing HFO stocks. That's a good thing because the existing HFO stocks will be able to offset some of the demand on the diesel stock. But don't kid yourself, that's not going to be enough to completely eliminate the sudden demand on diesel stocks. Even a blended fuel still means heavy demand on the diesel supply. And that could be a pretty big problem when most of those 50,000 ships suddenly want to start buying low sulfur fuel instead of HFO. Even if we say half of those ships suddenly want to start buying low sulfur fuel instead of HFO, that's quite an increase in demand. Especially when you consider that most of those ships were ocean freighters with the largest fuel consumption that delivers major competition for fuel. And when demand goes up, oil companies raise the price. Okay, well, with the price is going up, how much? That's what everybody wants to know. How much is the price going up? <laughs> well, if only we could get them to agree on that. Nobody agrees on the exact increase in price. Some believe that oil companies have already prepared for the increased demand. Others speculate about wild price increases, possibly even twice as much. I'm not so sure about that myself. Mansfield Energy once estimated that the diesel prices could increase by 8 to 17 percent. One thing everybody agrees on though is that the following months promised turbulent times for diesel prices. So what can we do? Well unfortunately we can't stop buying diesel. 
The first obvious answer, though, is stop at the fuel dock before 2020 and fill up all of your tanks. Long term, though, is to consider investments in reducing your fuel consumption. DMS can recommend several strategies to help with this. Some are even free. They don't require capital investment. The one thing we can't do, though, is ignore this. Like any regulatory change, IMO 2020 is no major calamity if actively managed. But left to magically resolve itself, it's going to grow and grow out of everyone's control. And then it becomes a disaster. So it's time to prepare for change. I hope everybody's looking forward to the new year. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. Engineers should be overpriced, inaccessible, boring. Boy, were they wrong. If you want to have an accessible engineer to work with, click that subscribe button to stay tuned for more videos. And did you know that as a professional engineer, I do more than just videos? Check out the website to find out what I can do to make your project easier.